What's up? So I started digging out my old microprocessor equipment that I have left up in my laboratory upstairs. <laughs> Had a little glitch in that last night. Like the laptop I used to program, the battery went bad in it. <laughs> Kept shutting off until I took the battery out and just ran it on the cord. Going through all my stuff trying to find it. So it's going to take me a little bit to make my microprocessor controller if I go that route. But I kind of wanted to use this rather than just simply hooking up the heating element. Which is easy, but... So, I came up with a brainstorm this morning. As I woke up thinking about it. So, uh, using a remote temperature sensor, the 10K, throws this way out of range. It just hits 99 and pegs there. So, But a way to use just a regular thermostat for a few days with a remote sensor is just to add a series resistor, which I did right there. I added a 4.K resistor. And this is just temporary, okay? So, I uh, hooked that up so... My, uh, oops, gotta wake this up again. It's like 86 in the tank because it hasn't been heated since yesterday. I'm just gonna plot as it kind of goes up some points there. And what I really care about is just like when it hits 120 is really what I need to know. And maybe, you know, 110, things like that, so I can set the uh, some things in the stupid regular thermostat. Once I get the microprocessor in there, it won't matter. I'm just gonna plot the curve through a lookup table or something and actually have it display the real temperature more fun one thing i do really remember to come back and hook up though is a high pressure cutout which this does not have right now so the setup right now just digital dry contacts that's what i've mainly been connecting this stuff here will be what i be will be using to control it anyway so this one here two pole when it pulls in for first stage it closes the 120 volts going out I kind of hate doing this, but I also have a dry contact going through for over here. Hate sharing a cube relay for that high voltage and low voltage. I know it's a no no. <laughs> and I'll maybe switch it when I find another matching one. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool using those. And this is my second stage. So, the way I have it wired now is it gets the run command and I programmed it for 50 hertz. This is the second stage. So, when it's. This is. I use a normally closed terminal there to hold. This, the fan down to slow but when it goes to high like if the tank is less than 110 or something I want it to go to 60 hertz and I want the fan to go up on high it's going to fully load it and then once it gets within a couple degrees you know the last 5 degrees or 10 degrees depending yet which I'll have more control that one of my microprocessor um, then this will open it'll uh, drop this to the 50 hertz and this will also slow down just to reduce the load compressor and everything and to heat up the last couple degrees. So I think I'm ready to run it. Using the Honeywell, I don't have any control of the, the on off point between, you know, it's just, you could just change the cycles per hour, which kind of changes how long it'll, you know, run and things like that a little bit. But, so I had the fan on continuous there. So let's go to heat. Eleven thirty-one. Looks like high sides over here. Those are just use regular view. I'm using a couple different thermometers. I think the three ninety-seven, the ninety-two degree one, is one I have sitting on the top of our minivan over there. Show you what temperature it is in here. And I think this one here, yeah, five eighty-nine. It matches with the one doing uh, the airspeed right here. Ooh, it's getting cooler. Now it has a thermistor built into it, but it is slow. It's not fast like that other one but it will give us a temperature reading so you can see it's already dropping uh, water temperature 86 in the tank it says 67 there 95 even oh it latched second stage there we go jumped up to 60 hertz fan speeds jumping up awesome so it had like a minute delay if that so that's cool this thermostat isn't going to work the best but it's probably going to get the job done for a few days. I've had this two-stage Honeywell touchscreen sitting in a box for years. And when I pulled it out of the box, the batteries were leaking. The paper tab was still in here for the built-in battery. That battery's probably bad, but who knows, a little 2032 or whatever's in there. Watch battery. Yeah. 81 degree. Like I said, that thing's reading slow. This thing's not... It gives a temperature with a little thermistor in there, it's just not fast. 
made for airspeed. Uh, looks like the temperature over on top of a minivan is going down. It was 92. So, and probably like 15 feet away. I'm going to let it run a few minutes to kind of see how it goes. One thing about ECM motors is you can like give a little more static pressure and it will speed up like a mother. Of course, it costs you half an amp to an amp to do that. Look at that airspeed now. I know it's there's a lot of junk down here guys but remember the house was flooded so right there is a junk area for things down here is normal storage 2200 watt ups just sitting there without the batteries for it extra compressor i never use a bunch of other stuff my buddy's stuff some batteries down there junk and then uh just have the stereo it's more and then car stuff up there So, uh, blown out 69. I don't know how good it is, but let that thing spin that long if I can restore the bearings. I think it's only meant for uh, probably a less duty cycle than that. So, let's watch the amps when I take this thing off. 9.1 almost. Costing like uh, about 8 tenths of an amp to speed up the blower like that. Now that feet per minute dropped down to less than half. <laughs> and this is on the fast speed for the blower. Remember when it goes drops down to 50 hertz, it's also gonna drop this down to a half speed, which is gonna be about a quarter of the power too. For the fan. I moved my temperature probe way back here closer to the garage. So when we get in quite as much air blowing right on it. And this is where all the heat's coming in. It's actually pretty nice in here already. Uh, it was end of the 90s when I fired this thing up. So it says it's 81.7.8 over there. Probably dropped down a little bit. That was blocking the air. <laughs> Definitely tempers the garage whenever it heats the water. I'm getting there. 111. 119 leaving. Uh, one other issue I might have with tapping that down there, I like kind of the way it's performing this way, but sediment. One aspect of it, it's going to remove, keep sediments from building up the bottom of the tank. And if you let it just do that, I'm sure we're going to have to just clean out the aerator screens on sinks and it's going to get into things in the house. So that might not be good because this is going to give it a path into the hot water. So, uh, anyway, as I've been plotting this, it was a pretty big jump in temperature, but it could be just, you know, how fast it heated up. But then I noticed about every two degrees or so of thermostat, it's about five degrees of uh, water coming into the heat exchanger. So, like, right now it says 112 and that says 79. The good thing about uh, it cutting the degrees in half like that, even a little less, is that uh, that means the water in the tank will change even more. So uh, two or three degrees for every degree that reads, and that's good. That'll slow down the uh, the cycling of the uh, compressor while I'm using this as a temporary controller, since you can't manually set cut in and cut out like on a commercial thermostat. Well, it was undesirable. I was bumping down the set point and then down to 84 from 80, you know, and it was up to 81. And I guess it anticipated and it freaking set a drop on the first stage. The stupid thing just shut off completely. <laughs> I have to wait a couple minutes for it to kick back on. I was up to 113. After I let this thing start back up, I let it run. And just now kicked down to low speed on its own so it dropped the fan speed to half and dropped the 50 hertz it's about to hit 120 
so I'll probably set this about a degree or so lower. It should be about right. It's just that I noticed when I was trying to like just drop it down and when I was getting close to the temperature, the thermostat reacts and like just shut completely off. That sucks. And since the bastard did stop on me, I went in ahead and hooked up a safety loop, 24 volts. There was, after all, back in here, the uh, high pressure switch was still installed. The specs are, but whatever the factory one is. Yeah. Interrupts the 24 volts, which will cut out the thermostat. And when it hit, drops down to pressure and cuts in, the thermostat will do its weight thing and all that stuff, effectively adding short cycle protection and all that. Oh, and uh, the amps were right around 10 amps, 60 hertz and fast blower, and then when it drops to 50 hertz and slows the blower, it goes down to about 8 amps, and it just shut off. Just get a little over 120. So I'll leave it set at 86, even though it says 84. I think it's, it's looking at the heat rise. So... That's, I'm going to leave it right there for right now. I think that'll control it temporarily. Put the blower on auto. It doesn't need to run all the time. Pretty cool. Yeah. So now I can probably let this do its thing, let this kind of run, and at the same time I can, over the next couple days or so, start working on some sort of controller for it that will be permanent.